Live. All right, good morning, Grace Baptist Church, uh, Bloomingdale, Georgia. Glad to be with y'all. Glad you can be with us. Uh, we're going to be in Matthew chapter 17 this morning. Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17. I draw your attention here. The, uh, this is uh, the passage of scripture. It has to do with what we call the Mount of Transfiguration. And the Mount of Transfiguration here. And we find a, a, an event. And uh, uh, I think it's apropos from the time we're living in today with a lot of uh, goings on um, in our society. Uh, I, meant to, I know I was forgetting to pray for it. We do need to pray for uh, what happened there in Tennessee. I know it was something I was forgetting uh, with the uh, RV that exploded. And uh, several people were, uh, they found out several people were, had died now. I think it's two or three people. Um, and we, they don't know the uh, extent of who or what and everything else. They got some suspects, I think. Uh, but we need to pray, you know, for our country and things of this nature uh, that this doesn't become a regular, um, you know, event. Uh, people, people are blowing up things and everything else. And we still would stay with uh, public discourse, you know, and decency. Everybody knows about that, right? Right, it's all over the news uh, that that uh, RV somebody planted something in the RV and it exploded and and uh, say so, yeah several homes were damaged along the block. I mean it was it was a really big explosion. And this, huh? Yeah, AT and T. A lot of communications and things were knocked out in that area in Tennessee. All right, so you go home, you check it out on the news, you'll see what I'm talking about. But. I, uh, I want to sign to this message. Hear he, hear, hear ye him, hear, hear ye him. Um, what we have here again is Mount of Transfiguration, verse one. It says, "After six days, Jesus taketh uh, Peter, James, and John, uh, his brother, and bringeth them up unto a high mountain apart." All right. So these is like uh, uh, the inner circle, so to speak. These three, and he says, "And was transfigured before them." Uh, and his face did shine as the sun. You can imagine uh, this sight uh, that they are witnessing. He says, And his raiment was white as light. And uh, behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. And I can imagine, you know, James, John, and uh, uh, Peter, James, and John, and them witnessing this sight here. Uh, it had to be amazing. Uh, but, uh, 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 Peter makes mention of this later on in the book of Peter and he says we have a more sure word of prophecy uh, when he's describing that which was given to them in Jesus Christ than this event right here. Amen? And so that's why it's so important. Uh, the word of God is so important. Especially in the day and time which we live in. We got a lot of people, you know, still uh, in, caught up in the emotionalism of visions and prophecies and everything else. And uh, not putting the importance on what the word of God already has said to us. And holding on to that. Uh, especially in these latter days. Because well, in the latter days, people will depart from the faith. Amen. They're going to be giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of the devil. And, they, uh, and the Bible talks about they're going to move away from preaching the word of God and be turned unto fables. And that's where we're at. But what says, he says, uh, again, verse 3 says, Behold, there appeared unto him Moses and Elias talking with him. Then, now, then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias. And if you know anything about the Old Testament, every time they had an encounter with God, they would mark that spot with some type of, uh, you know, stones or something. You know, remember Jacob and remember what he, the vision he saw and everything else. He, so he had the rocks there and everything else. And so they would mark the spot. So that's what he's kind of referencing. But I want you to notice this because this is very important. He says, while he yet spake. Now imagine it. Now he's talk, he's viewing this scene. And then he begins to say, Lord, you want us to make us here tabernacles here to remember this, this spot and this event. And while he's speaking, watch this, while he yet spake, verse 5, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of a cloud which said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear him. You ain't trying to see the scene. I mean, here he is. Just witnessing Moses and Elias, and they're talking with Jesus, and he's, his face, it says, shone like the sun. And he says, Lord, you want us to make, uh, you know, this is man, basically this is like man's 
a, a thought and interjecting into this situation. He said, you want us, do you want us to do this? Is this what we should be doing here? And then this voice, this cloud cuts him off in the midst and says, hear him. I, I, don't, think it's, I don't think it did this. Hear him. <laughs> I think it just, I think it went, I think it almost probably thundered. So I think it went, hear him. Like, be quiet. Listen. Hear him. And he says, and watch this, um, verse 6, and when the disciples heard it, and the reason I said it is, look at their reaction. It says, when the disciples heard it, they did what? <laughs> they fell, watch it, say they fell on their face and were so afraid. So I, that's why I don't say, I don't think it was like a whisper. I think it was like, you know, if you're buried sitting in the house and you know, man, out of the blue, one of them thunder boomers come out of the bloom. The ones that you ain't got, you know, it's, it's something when they're they rumbling and they get close and everything, you kind of get ready for it. But one of those ones where you sitting there and go, pow! And everybody, everybody jumping out. I didn't jump. <laughs> you jumped, the cat jumped. <laughs> Things that ain't supposed to jump, jump. We all jumped. He says, verse 6, and Jesus came. Now watch this. Now look how far they showed this event. Look how, look how long they're on the ground. He says, and they fell on their face and were so afraid. In verse 7, Jesus came and touched them and said, arise. It's like, they was like, there ain't nobody looking up and saying nothing now. The, it, Jesus coming up and said, all right, it's over. <laughs> it's over. Everybody's okay. You got all your limbs. Everything's good. He says, and touched them and said, arise. Be not afraid. Uh, he says, and when they lifted up their eyes, can't y'all see? It's not like, it's like, it, it's okay to look. When they lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus. And look at verse 9. He says, and as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them saying, tell the vision to no man. Now, a lot of people say, this is why we shouldn't have television because it's tell, tell the vision to no man. <laughs> but he says, tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man uh, be risen uh, again from the dead. And his disciples asked him, uh, 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 saying, Why then said the scribes that Elias must come first? And Jesus said unto them, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that all Elias has already come. Oh, he's already come. And they, have, they knew him not. He's talking about John the Baptist. Because he, sa he says, already, and they have knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise, uh, also shall the Son of Man suffer of them. Then uh, the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. Amen. Now, uh, this passage of Scripture, I, I, I want you to know some things about this. That God's trying to get their attention. Amen. Again, here, uh, you know, we, 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 uh, men and, uh, and uh, who we are and everything else, we're, uh, we're basically, we're, we're religious. A lot of, you know what I mean, and the supernatural, it draws out of just our all. And so they, they're at this event, and Peter, being uh, uh, outspoken as he was, he sees this and he wants, man, you know, this is special. Uh, we need to do something. You know what I mean? If we have an encounter, encounter uh, most people, you know what? That's why uh, you need the gospel. Because the gospel directs you to what was already done for you. Amen? In Jesus Christ. Most of us, all of a sudden, there's something supernatural. You, 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 you narrowly escape death. You know what I'm saying? Something happens. And first thing we want, we want to we wanna do something. And the Lord, he's, he's putting all that aside. He said, well, no, no. This is what you need to do. Hear him. You don't need to do it. You, what you, what, this is what you need to do. This is the best course. It's not what we want to build. We need to build a tabernacle for Elias and, and Moses. And you, no, no, no. What you need to do is hear him. So he, he, he puts everything. Uh, so, uh, and, and what he's doing, he's getting their attention. And it's like the Lord speaking to you. Uh, in your need of salvation. Uh, all the noise around you, all the talking and everything else, the cheering and music and everything else, you know what God, uh, so to speak, silences the crowd. Silences, stops the activity, and he draws your focus to what he says is important. He says, uh, the Lord, you know, the Lord wants you to uh, uh, draw their attention to what Jesus Christ has said and will say. Amen. Amen. And often, because oftentimes, what what will happen is the disciples they get what he said after the fact. It'll say an event will happen, and then it says, "Then they remember." 
Right? Instead of them uh, looking forward to and understanding, oh, this, this is going to take place, or, or this is important. And sometimes we as Christians, you know, I think we miss the importance in things because we get caught up, and it's easy to do. We're emotional. We get caught up in emotionalism, the spontaneity of things and everything else, and we really don't hear what God is trying to convey to us. A lot of times folk go to church, right? And I'm not against choirs, you know what I mean? Good singing and everything else. But you know what? Folks who get caught up in the emotionalism of the moment and you know what but they really don't understand you know the real significance of the message amen, amen. and oftentimes even in churches uh, which is bad they'll put a whole lot on the music and you know what they won't put a premium on the message amen let me tell you something without the message of salvation there would be no need to sing amen, amen. really amen. and then it's, it's so much put on what people are wearing or how things are going about instead of you know what us hearing from God like he said, hear him. That's what he's saying. Hear him. All right? And so uh, the Lord wants to draw his attention. Uh, 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 the Father clears the air, so to speak, and says, you know what I want? I want you to hear my son. This morning, you know what God wants you? If you're lost and not saved, you know what God wants you to listen to? He wants you to hear him. Amen. Amen. You know what? We've just uh, we, we've gone through the, uh, uh, this year, and let me tell you, we've been hearing a whole lot. We've been hearing a whole lot from CNN, ABC, CBS, Fox, MSNBC, Twitter, Facebook, Skype, you name it. We've been hearing a whole lot. Uh, amen. Somebody, y'all can say amen. We've been spending a whole lot, lot of time on YouTube, they too, my tube, everybody's tube. Pa they got new stuff out here. Parlor, parlor, you know, face block, all kind of stuff. We've been spending, but let me tell you something. Y'all know what God wants us to hear? Yeah. Him. Amen. All them, you know what? Them, all, all they've been giving us is making us stay away, uh, awake, giving, making our blood pressure rise, making us say, man, that's, you know, getting our, our tempers up and our getting our hot blood pressure up, and we can't believe they can do this and that and everything else. Let me tell them, Jesus Christ saying, hear him. I know one thing that does, that brings peace to our soul. Amen. Hear him. So why? Why Why hear him? First of all, why? I said this right. Uh, first of all, it's because uh, the authority that he has. That's what God's saying. You hear him. You know why? Because that's my son. That's my son. Don't listen to it. Why are you listening to anybody else? God says, hear him. Right? The authority. He has authority. Let me tell you something. He has, uh, he has all authority. Right? Uh, he's not an angel. He's not a servant. He's my son. Hear him. Him, Amen. Uh, uh, he's part of me. You got uh, God the Father, God the Son, and uh, God the Holy Spirit. And you know what? He's the great I Am. He's God manifest in the flesh. Let me tell you something. When you get sick, you may call a friend for advice. But let me tell you something. When you real, need real help, you know what you do? You are schedule an appointment to see who? A doctor. Amen. Why go to a doctor? You know why? Because he got authority. Amen. Why? We think this right. You know, he's got, he's got all these years of schooling. He's got experience. He's got equipment. He can examine you. Amen. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. When spiritual problems take place, you know who you need to go to? The great physician. Jesus Christ. Amen. Hear him. Amen. Uh, let me tell you something. He, he spake like no other. He spake like no other person. That's what, that's what some of the, uh, the testimonies about it. He spake like no other. Let me tell you something. He died like no other. Amen. Watch this. He rose like no other. Amen. He's coming again like no other. Amen. Let me tell you something. In his life, you know what? His authority speaks. His accomplishment speaks. His argument speaks to our conscience. Let me tell you something. The Bible says this right here. Faith cometh by what? Hearing. And hearing by the what? Word of God. Jesus even said in John chapter 5, search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life and they are they which testify of who? Me. Hear him. You know, we, it's, it's a, we, we're trying to get out of this year of conflict and turmoil and everything else. And let me tell you something. Uh, God wants you to hear above all the noise. Hear something for Jesus, from Jesus Christ that can make it a difference in your eternal destiny. All the other stuff, you know what? It ain't going to do nothing but make you take more Maalox and drink, uh, I said drink more Maalox and I was going to say drink more, uh, uh, I was going to say drink more Rolaids and eat more Maalox, but that would be <laughs> the wrong way around. That's all it's going to do. God's trying to tell you you need to hear Him. Him. Why? 
He's given authority to him. When Jesus Christ t- was spake in the book of John, we don't have time to even look at all the verses, but he said, I don't speak of myself, amen. I speak of him that sent me, amen. And he said, the things that I do and what I say, it's all about who I'm manifesting and where I came from, amen. And that's why God is saying, hear him. A lot of people's lives is all caught up in turmoil and scared to death. Turn off the television, man, and quit listening to, uh, 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 what's, so what's, so y'all, so what's, who's up, some of them, the big wigs on there, everybody, you know, when I was a young man, it was, you know, we could all turn in and believe Walter Conkright. He was telling us the truth, amen? Uh, to, uh, and and uh, Paul Harvey, uh, uh, the rest of the story. Let me tell you something, you want to hear the real story? Hear him, Amen. You want to hear what you want to hear. Let me tell you. You want to hear the story from the beginning and end. Jesus Christ said, "I'm the Alpha and the Omega." Amen. Hear him. He got. It's a. Let me tell you something. The salvation story is something worth listening to. It's something worth telling again. Amen. His authority. You got all these. Let me tell you something. Uh, uh, Romans chapter ten again says, "Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God." Go to Hebrews chapter two real quick before I go to this next point. Hebrews chapter two. Look at this verse. Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. Look at this. Hebrews chapter 2. Verse 1. It says, Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how should we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard Him? Amen? Hear Him. Why? He has authority. It's not, this is not idle words. These are not words of somebody that doesn't know what they're talking about. Often, let me tell you, we're listening to and giving a lot of credence to people. You know, they have earthly, no earthly idea what they're even talking about. They, they're, at best, they're surmising. And at best, you know, they're, they're supposed to be unbiased. They're giving us their biased opinion. You know, I know, let me tell you something. I tell you, I tell you in Sunday school class, because I said, man, I got to preach this. I said, let me tell you something. Buddy, I said, uh, we got all this stuff going on, social media and this, that, and you got the little things popping up, fact checkers, fact checkers. I said, friend, let me tell you something. I'm fact checking everything right here. Amen and amen. amen. You're telling me a man, you know, uh, a man can be a woman, a woman can be a man. I'm like, let, me, let me fact check that. Nope, <laughs> it don't say that. <laughs> amen. <laughs> He said, God made them one way. I don't care what kind of words and uh, uh, psychological, you know, uh, trampolines you jumping on. Let me tell you something. I fact checked your friend. Let me tell you, you still a man. Amen. Your chromosome, let me tell you something. Your chromosomes say you're a man. Amen. You can change them on the outside, but your chromosomes on the inside still say you're a man. Amen. Uh, your inward plumbing still say you're a man or a woman. Amen and amen. Your hormones still say you're a man or a woman. Amen. You can tell me. You can identify. You can all kind of fire. But you know what? I fact checked your friend, and guess what? God didn't make nobody. He didn't. He didn't make no other. <laughs> that was free. That ain't got that was, that was, Amen. So here, why? Why? Authority that has. He's my son. He's God, man, and flesh. Second of all, why? What are we going to hear him about? You know what we're going to hear him about? This access. This access that he has. The access. Actually, you know what the Bible says? Watch this. Go to Romans chapter 5 real quick here. Romans chapter 5. Look at this verse. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Why hear him? Why should I believe him above? Uh, somebody throw someone. What's, what's some game? What's the name out there? Somebody a name out there that somebody people listening to news. Why listen to him over Rush Limbaugh, Sean Hannity? That's what I know. Rush Limbaugh, Sean Hannity, uh, uh, Anderson, Anderson Cooper. Please, uh, Don Moore, whatever. Don, Don, who? Don Lemon. <laughs> Lon Lemonade, <laughs> whatever. Why listen to him? You know why? Because he's got authority. Amen. God said, hear him. He's got access. Romans chapter 5 verse 1. 
Look at this. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through, look at this, access, through our Lord Jesus Christ. And look at verse 2. By whom, also, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace uh, wherein we stand uh, and rejoice in the glory of God. Do y'all see that? Well, you know why we listen to him? I'm listening to him. He got access. Why listen to somebody that don't have access? Amen. He got access. The, the, what, what I'm talking about. John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. Amen. That's why I'm listening to him. I'm not listening to you when you're talking about what I believe. I don't care what you believe. Amen. I fact-checked it. I, <laughs> I fact, I, it tells me what I'm, who am I supposed to believe in. Guess what? You're not there. See, a password gives you access to an email. Is that right? Right? A debit card gives you access to a bank account. Keys give you access to a car, a home, a gate. Amen? But only Jesus Christ can give you access into heaven. That's why I'm listening. That's why he says, hear him. Why? He give you access. He has authority. He'll give you access. Amen? Uh, it's not, he doesn't say, hear Muhammad. He don't say, hear Buddha. He, don't say, he sure don't say, hear the latest news personality. Amen. He says, uh, oh, God forbid, he don't say uh, the, the, uh, the, the latest athletic personality or actor, acting personality. Uh, no, no, no. He says, hear him. Amen. My son, he's the one to give you access. Acts 4.12 says, there's none other name under heaven given among me whereby we must be saved. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 5 says there's one mediator between God and men. It is the man, Christ Jesus. Uh, Hebrews chapter uh, uh, 9. Watch this. Go if you would to Hebrews chapter 9. Look at this verse 11 through 15 quickly. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 11 through 15. He's got access. Why waste my time with somebody that doesn't have access? Amen. Amen. Look at this. Uh, but as a matter of fact, if you try to, let me tell you something, you try to access something, uh, especially emails and everything else, right? You know what they do? They time out on you. They like you, you, you've, you've attempted it too many times. You, you can't, let me tell you something, you can't be the right person, amen. Jesus Christ said this right without him. He said, if you climb up some other way, he said, I'm the door, amen. I'm the access. He said, if you climb up some other way, you're going to be regarded as a thief and a robber, right? And they only come to rob and steal. He said, I come to give you life and to give you more abundantly. Access. That's why I'm listening to him. I'm not listening. Let me tell you something. Why would I listen? I'm not president. I listen to me. President, Pope, or whoever. Why would I listen to them and, uh, uh, and listen to their authority when I got the authority of Jesus Christ? Amen. Why would I listen to some actor that's telling me about their experience and what they believe? Why would I listen to some athlete? They don't have access, my brethren. Jesus Christ is the way. Uh, Hebrews chapter 9 verse 11. Look what it says here. Hebrews 9 verse 11. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands that is to say not in this building neither by the blood of goats and calves but by his own blood here it is access he entered in once into the holy place having obtained eternal redemption for us. That's access. We have access through him, not through anybody else. He said, verse 13, For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of a heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctify him to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit uh, offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve uh, the living God. For this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament that by means of death for redemption, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, uh, uh, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal life. Amen. We have eternal life through Jesus Christ. It's my access code. Amen. It's not me. It's Jesus. He said, I am the door. Amen. Now watch this. That's... That's why and that's what. He has access. Hear him. Amen. I'm not listening to no religious leader when I can go directly to the source. Amen. Not really listen, I'm not listening to nobody who's philosophizing and, 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 and just all kind of stuff when I can know that I have access through Jesus Christ. But when? When do I need to hear him? You need to hear him right now. 
Amen? Amen. So he said, hear him. When he told him, he said, hear him, he wasn't saying tomorrow. He was saying, whenever he's speaking to you, that is, guess what? That, that trumps anything you're going to hear. Amen. That's the most important when he's saying it. Amen. And you know what? If you lost right now and God is speaking to you, know what? It's the most in, your, uh, your uh, 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 allotted time is right here and now. Amen. You cannot guarantee me tomorrow. Nobody can. Amen. Allotted time. That's when you need to hear him. You're a lot of time that he's given you. Go says, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians in chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Look at this. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Verse 1 says, We then as workers together with him beseech you, also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. For he says, I have heard thee in a time accepted. And in the day of salvation, I have succored thee. Watch this. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Amen. Amen. Now. You don't say hear him tomorrow. You know, uh, nobody, that would be, well, if it's most important, why would he say hear it tomorrow? It's now. Some things are right now. Salvation, you know, is one of those things that should be most important. Above all. Let me tell you something. Uh, changing presidents. I know we're fixing to change president. I know. So, oh, well, he's still out of. No, we're fixing to change presidents. But guess what? I promise you, you're not going to all of a sudden, like, wake up the next day and go, Oh, man, everything's changed. Because it's not going to affect you like that. It's not. I'm, I'm, the weather is going to change. It won't be as cold or whatever. You know, it won't affect you like that. But let me tell you something. If you die in your sins without putting your faith in Jesus Christ, let me tell you something. There will be an eternal change. It will affect you. Amen. That's why it's important here the allotted time that you have. Uh, watch this. Go, if you will, to Ecclesiastes. Now, you know what? I know uh, young people think, oh, well, you know what? Uh, that's what older people, you know, they closer to death, you know, uh, than us and everything else. Uh, as if, you know what? That is uh, so far from the truth in the regards to this. You know how many, y'all know how many young people are perishing today? The time which we live in? And what's sad about it is this right here, they're, they're, they're younger than their youth. I mean, suicide, drug overdose. I mean, you know what I mean? Stuff that, you know, is, and that's why we say such a waste. Because they had their youth on their side. And then they ended their life or was taken from them prematurely. I mean, look how many young black men are being killed in the streets. I mean, and this, this year, it's record number of homicides. Y'all realize this year, record number of homicides in our major cities? That's why it's important that, to understand the allotted of time. That's why David said, my days, you know, uh, teach me to number my days. Amen. Because people think that this thing, that it can always be put off. Let me tell you, when God says, hear him, he's saying, this is a priority. Here it is right now, because you don't know when you may get another opportunity to hear him. Even Jesus Christ said when he was on the earth, he said, you know what, y'all better listen to me now. He said, because one of these days, I'm going to go away. Amen. He said, one of these, matter of fact, you, one of these days, y'all going to be wishing y'all see the days of the Son of Man. He said, you know what, it won't be here for you to hear or see. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, look what it says. I'm talking about now. He says, remember now. This is to a young person. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. Let me tell you something. Youth is not a time to be misspent. Amen. It's not a time to be misspent. People think that, let me tell you, you don't ever get back youth. You don't ever get it back. There is a, there's a certain... Uh, 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 vitality in youth that you don't get. I know they spe selling uh, uh, pills that say vitality, but let me tell you, they, they just selling pills. You don't get it back. You don't get the days back. You don't get that vitality in your life. I'm telling you, somebody's an older person. I'll be 60 years. You, 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 don't, you don't get it back. I don't care what you do. What you, you, don't, you don't get it back. And let me tell you something. When salvation has passed you by and you die, let me tell you something. You don't get it back. As it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment, the Bible says. 
in a lot of time. He, remember now, Ecclesiastes 12, 1, Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. While the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. While the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain. When the days of the keepers of the house shall tremble, and the strong men shall bow themselves, and the grinders shall cease because they are few, and those that look out the windows be darkened, and the door shall be shut in the streets, and when the sound of the grinding is low, and he shall rise up at the voice of the bird, and all the daughters of music shall be brought low. Uh, and when uh, they shall be afraid of that which is high, and fear shall be in the way, and the almond tree shall flourish, and the grasshopper shall uh, shall uh, be a burden and the desire shall fail because man go to his long home and the mourners go about the streets or ever the silver cord be loosed or the golden bowl be broken at the pitcher uh, or the pitcher be broken at the, at the foundation or the wheel broken at the cistern then shall the dust return to the earth as it was and the spirit shall return to God who gave it that's talking about the process of life, is it not? And dying. That's why it says, hear him. You have, let me tell you something, you have only a lot of time of access. That's why the Bible says today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Then last of all, let me tell you something. You know why you need to hear him? Because there's accountability for not listening to him. See, there's a lot of people in this life, you know what, they can say stuff and you know what, God will never hold you accountable. Really. Now, when your parents say something to you, he'll hold you accountable. <laughs> Amen. Because the Bible says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, that thou mightest live long upon the earth. Amen. Amen. And then there's God himself. And you're accountable when, let me tell you when you hear this message, God will hold you accountable. He said, hear him. And let me tell you something, Jesus Christ didn't say anything just idle. He said when he, when he spoke his words, they had eternal implications. Amen. He said the words of thy spirit, to speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. They hold you accountable. Amen. There's several people in this life that if you just put it off, you know what? It go bad for you. If a judge, when they send out a warrant and it's signed by a judge for your arrest, and that letter comes in and you put it off, guess what? You can shrug it off. You can just look at it, tear it up, and throw it in the trash. But when you get caught by the police, never tell you something. They're going to arrest you based on that, that warrant. Amen? Let me tell you something. When God says hear him and you don't, you're crazy if you think God won't hold you accountable. Amen. Look at this. Watch this. Go to John chapter 5. John chapter 5. See, there's accountability for not listening to him in John chapter 5. A lot of people say, oh, you know what, that preacher just saying this and that preacher just saying that. And you know what, if you're just hearing it from just the preacher, you know what, you, guess what, you're not, you're, not, you're not hearing him like God wants you to hear him. Amen. John chapter 5 here. John chapter 5. Look at this. John chapter 5. Look at verse 22. John 5, 22. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son, that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father that hath sent him. A very, very I send you, he that heareth my word. Now look at this. Look at this. This is Jesus speaking. Now watch this. He that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life. And shall not come to damnation, uh, condemnation, I'm sorry, but is passed from death unto life. Look at this. Verse 25. Verily, verily, I send you the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of who? Son of God. And they that, uh, and they, uh, that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. And hath given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which that all that are in the grave shall hear who? His voice. And shall come forth. They that have done, uh, 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 shall come forth. And they that have done good unto the resurrection of life. And they that have done evil unto the resurrection of what? See, there's a consequence for not listening to it. Amen. 
See, I've heard you can hear things and not listen and not regard them. Amen. See, there's accountability. People just kind of think, oh, oh I, can just, I can just shrug this off. No, friend, you can't shrug this off. You, you can shrug this off no more than Pilate washed his heads and said, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm uh, 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 free from the blood of this innocent man. No, sir. Let me tell you something. That's forever. That's forever pinned in the word of God. Y'all think, think Pilate was free? When Jesus Christ said, whoever is not with me is against me? I fact checked it. <laughs> Look at this. Go to Hebrews chapter 10. Now watch this now. Hebrews chapter 10. No sir, friend. There's accountability. You know what I like? You know what I, I know because I, I, I was lost in my sin. You know when you start hearing the gospel message, you know that rubs you the wrong way. You know because you know what we don't like? We don't like accountability in our sin. Amen. We just want to enjoy. We just want to just, you know, have fun and everything. We don't want no real accountability. And that rubs us the wrong way. We're like, man, that, that's, that's this, that, and everything. No, no, that's, this, this, is, this, is, this is truth from hearing him. There is accountability that God's going to make you accountable. That Bible says every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. So then every, was, every one of us shall give an account of who? Himself. To God. Hebrews chapter 10. Look at this. Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 5. Hebrews 10, 5. It says, wherefore, it says, wherefore when, when he, that's Jesus. I said, well, look at this now. This is Jesus. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he said, he said, sacrifice and offerings thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast no pleasure. Then said I, look at this, lo, I come. In the volume of the book it is written of me. To do thy will, O God. Above what he says, sacrifice and offerings and burnt offerings and offerings for sin thou wouldest not, neither has pleasure therein which are offered by the law. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first that he may establish the second, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Amen. Jesus said that. Amen. That's not Baptist doctrine, that's Bible doctrine. I fact checked it. <laughs> <laughs> Verse 11. And every priest standing daily and ministering oftentimes the same sacrifice which can never take away sin. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice sent, uh, for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God from hence uh, uh, forth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he had perfected forever them that are sanctified. Amen and amen. This is what the Bible says. And friend, when you reject that, you will be held accountable. God provided something to, for you. He pardons you through Jesus Christ. He gives you peace through Jesus Christ. He redeems you through Jesus Christ. He reconciles you through Jesus Christ. Amen. And if you reject that, look what it said. Come back here. We read this verse earlier. Go to Hebrews chapter 2. Therefore, we ought to give the heed, the more heed to the things which we have heard. Lest at any time we should let them what? Slip. Take the back burner. Not remember it. Y'all, if we went back to that time, but we went back to remember, he said, he didn't tell them to forget that incident. But he said, don't mention that incident until I'm risen. Amen. Why? Because I want you to hear me right now. Amen. For if the word, verse 2, for the word spoken uh, by angels was steadfast in every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense reward. Look at this, verse 3. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, uh, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord? How are you going to escape? See, you're accountable not for what you don't know, but what you, what you do know. Amen. See, to him to know to do good and do it to not, to him it is what? Sin. There's an accountability associated with it. The Lord was uh, it says, confirmed to us by them that heard him. Amen. I know today in the time which we are living in, there's a whole lot of uh, stuff buzzing around. I don't say be ignorant. Be abreast of what's taking place because, you know, it may uh, be a... Uh, uh, you know, safety concerns and everything else. But if you're lost, let me tell you something. What Jesus Christ is saying about your soul and what God says about in His Word, you know what? 
that ought to be most important to you. Amen? Amen. That's what you ought to be listening to some, uh, whether or not, you know, uh, uh, Purdue, uh, Lafayette, or whatever the name is, or uh, Warlock, or whatever. I don't know the name. I just, I just, I always, my wife's constantly correcting me about the names, you know, I and mean, it could be, you know, James and John for all I care. But in the real scheme of things, if you lost, what is that going to mean to you? One second after you die. Whether or not who, whether or not the, the Republicans get the Senate or the Democrats, what, what that is not going to need no, it's going to mean nothing to you without Jesus Christ. That's why I said, above the noise, above all you think you ought to be doing, everything else, God is telling you, hear Him and what He has to say, because that determines the destiny of your soul. Amen. Let's all stand for a word of prayer. We'll be dismissed. Hear him.